Bonnaroo 2024 is in the books. You are listening to the What Podcast. I'm Barry. That's Lord Taco. And that's Brian. Lord Taco and I clearly uh, got the memo about t-shirts. Uh, and we <laughs> if there was a, a memo, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get into that in a little bit for several reasons. Uh, Never Not Great has become uh, a theme, which if you're new, we'll explain here in a little bit. Um, but first of all, guys, we um, let's let's play a little word salad or something. Uh, words that come to my mind for Bonnaroo 2024: amazing, unexpected, affirming, reaffirming. Um, reaffirming is a good one. Yeah, yeah. I'll cut. I'll cut right to it. I'll just say best Bonnaroo ever. Best Bonnaroo ever. He did it. <laughs> Taco did it. went right to my favorite thing ever. <laughs> the, it's the best one uh, after all these years. It was pretty good. It was uh, completely unexpected, though. The T-shirt tells it all. It's never not great. Uh, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll be recap that real quickly. Uh, one of our many guests is Ken Weinstein. Uh, Ken is the, he's with Big Hassle Media. He is the guru when it comes to media at Bonnaroo. He's been with it since the beginning. You can go back to our podcast and find out his history. Um, I mean, it's such a great story. The, the founders with Superfly and AC Entertainment uh, found him, called him and said, hey, we're doing this festival. We don't even have a name yet, and it's going to be in the middle of Middle Tennessee do you want to be involved? And he has been ever since. And yeah, it's a really good story. That's how far back. Yeah. Yeah. That's how far back it goes. It didn't even have a name yet. He's not a founder, but he's, he's damn close. He's next. Yeah. He's the next guy in the room. Yeah. He's the first guy they called. That's right. And, uh, during one of our conversations, we talked about the 2016, uh, festival, which was one of the lowest numbers, uh, ever. And not that great a lineup, uh, most people would agree. But Ken nailed it and said it was still great because it's never not great. So that's the history of the T-shirt. It comes up in a couple of other episodes uh, that we'll get into later. But uh, reaffirming, Brian, you, me, and and uh, Russ sitting in Russ's bus, um, what, Friday night or Saturday morning? Uh, during one of our conversations about the event and this show, um, we all agreed that was the word, right? This is reaffirming. We love it. We're in. I'm already planning next year. I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll go first on it. It's 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 like anything in life. You're not going to do it forever. You know, you're not going to do everything forever. Everything ends. Um, And so I always, you know, as I get into middle age, I think about that a lot more. Like sometimes I think, is this the last time I do insert whatever this, what this is, Uh, whether it's a concert or seeing a fan, uh, you know, a great grandparent or grandparent or whatever uh, uh, it might be in your life. You, there's always a time when it's going to stop. And I started to think about that because a lot of different reasons, some that are boring that I won't go into on a show like this. And some of them are just the. The, the grind of doing stuff like this and and we'd even kind of but whether we spoke of it out loud we kind of implied that you know we'll just reevaluate after this year and we'll just kind of rethink of where things are going to go because why not i mean you should sure. always be kind of evaluating what you're doing yeah i'm glad you called it a grind because it really is i mean we put yeah. this show out every week and sometimes we record we you know we love doing it week to week but sometimes you put out that episode it seems like it goes into the void because yeah. you don't get that instant uh feedback or instant uh, uh satisfaction of you know putting it out so yeah i mean and it all came flooding in what friday saturday when we were there just hanging out so many people would come up and say Oh, you know, really enjoy the podcast. Your episode helped me with this. I learned that. So it was like, okay, that's the reaffirming part of all this is, okay, now we actually do see that a lot, a lot of people, a lot of y'all do listen. Every bit, every bit of that is true on top of the fact also of just, do we keep going to this right. event every every year? And because yeah. it is hard. It is hard. It's, it's a, it's, 
it's more than just a few days of preparation and everybody who who goes it's the same for for everybody and it reaffirming like it was barely a couple of a day and a half in i'm like uh, it was more like the two hell was hours. i think i'm not gonna yeah, do yeah. this <laughs> yeah. Let's be i'm honest. not gonna do this anymore it was two like, hours no. for me it was when we when uh tuba t- shouted out uh, and we'll yeah. get into that. Um, Good call on that. Yeah, absolutely. But that that's a little anecdotal. O- overall, yeah. I think a lot of people had the same thoughts of uh, what and why well, would let, I ever not come to this wonderful place? Let's let's set the scene a little bit. And uh, I've thought about this for days. We could each do an hour individually. I'm pretty <laughs> on my sure local show, I already did. I know you did, and it <laughs> yeah. was great. Uh, and I recommend go go to stoneonair.com. Or, uh, yeah, podcast Stone on Air. And, yeah. And Brian does a uh, full recap on on his. It's very anecdotal. It's very specific to my exact steps yeah, of the fire yeah, farm. It's so not exactly what we're going to get into, but uh, we could each do it. But just to set the scene, so I mean, Brian, as we've said many times, has been every year uh, since 2002. I went to the first one and then did not go until 2007. I've been to everyone since. Uh, Russ started in 18, right? Coming, yeah. Yeah, uh, and th- that makes this one my fifth. Yeah, when, when you we started this podcast. Subtract the two that didn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. So we have history. Uh, our camp, Camp Nut Butter, uh, at one time had as many, I think, as 30 people. It was a big, big thing. We took over an entire space. We had all kinds of uh, friends, people we didn't know until, you know, us. The three of us met, basically, become friends through Bonnaroo. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of history. This year... Uh, Camp Nut Butter, as we were packing to leave, we all sort of realized it was going to be just the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> From 30 to three. 30 to three. That was yeah. another part of the 100%. Like, questioning. Like, all right, well, we don't have any campmates. Mates. 100%. <laughs> and, you know, can I spend, do they want to spend four days with me? You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I get it. We all have those questions. I know. I look, I stare at y'all enough every week. I don't know if I can do <laughs> yeah. it. You've heard all my it, jokes yeah. and my stories. Yeah. Um, but, and this is a big part of it, we started uh, randomly camping next to uh, some really cool people from the Nashville area three years ago. And I've thought about this a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure, you know, Russ, you met them because they parked next to you in the bus. So you got to know them a lot better than Brian and I did. Two years ago, I think I came in Thursday night, maybe Friday night. I don't even remember when I got there. Um and, you know, didn't know them. Me and Nate Gale, our friend, came in. And Nate's a talker. I'm a talker. I don't think those folks from Nashville ever had a chance to put a word in. I feel bad. So I never really got to know them. Tell these Chattanooga loudmouths to no shut kidding. up. came in like, who hey, are these guys taking over our space? And I, I apologize <laughs> to Mike, Brad, uh, Jerry, and Beth. Um but thank you. They they parked. They camped next to us again last year. And I know I came in Saturday morning and didn't stay long. Had, had long issues. Um, but did, well, last year they were close. They were a little bit kinda, down yeah, the right. line from Catty us. Corner. But this year we actually made a plan. Okay, they're coming in. Let's save some spots together. And we actually got saved uh, our camp. Really, I mean, it made it, it really made did. it made it worth having. That's made my point. Worthwhile. That's my hundred yeah. percent yeah. point. I think the three of us realized. You know the. Camp Nut Butter, as we know it, may be over, but it's transitioning. And thanks to uh, those very, very cool people, uh, and we all got to spend a lot more time with them this year, and um, that made it great. I mean, as if if our camp, if Camp Nut Butter was Spartan, we didn't have the fence, we didn't have the you know the Bloody Mary tent, we didn't have we had the. Marquee. We didn't have the podcasting tent. Yeah, which we, we didn't need anymore. I didn't bring the mailbox. <laughs> you know, all of the kind of things oh, like the that. The mailbox. I forgot about the mailbox. Yeah, we were just sort of let's do this. But those guys, man, they bring everything. They had the grill, the 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 hanging uh, shoe thing that had all the condiments. Oh in yeah, it. yeah. It's like a pantry, it, a traveling it pantry. Was unbelievable, unbelievable, and that that really made the space great. And uh, as we traveled around and I've talked to people, it's amazing to me how many people have those kind of experiences. Oh yeah, beyond us. Yeah, Everybody nothing unique. A, nothing unique there. Correct. Nothing right? unique at all. No, but it's it's such a big part of mm-hmm. Bonnaroo, right? Mm-hmm. 
everybody has their travel mates. They have their people they park next to, they, the friends that they meet. Everyone has a unique story, but there's so much commonality. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely. That's the thing that, uh, man, I just I kept thinking about that all weekend. The more we ran into people, um, and and Russ, you you mentioned it, and this was such a big part of the weekend. And and I I know I'm bouncing around because there's so much to try to get to, but we kept running into people who would come up and say thank you for the podcast. You helped me get mm-hmm. through the year, you know, by doing it every week. You kept me energized, but you also the do's and don'ts and the tips. I mean, how many people came up and said, I had everything packed and then I heard your show and I unpacked and redid it, you know, based <laughs> yeah. on the, on the tips and thank you. Um, it wasn't just, and I think Brian, you said this at one point, it wasn't just like people coming up and say, Hey, you know, I've seen you on YouTube or whatever. It was, a genuine thank you for the help. Thank you for the show and thank you for the information. So that's Yeah, what... it's pretty it's pretty remarkable really and uh and and so cool, beyond cool. Thank you so much for uh for that too. Uh for for the you know, you the listener, the viewer uh for for, right. for doing that cuz it does I mean, selfishly it does bring validation. It does, but it's also cool. Like it's just neat. That's I mean we're not doing this just to sit around in an echo chamber. We, right. we, we want to put out interesting, uh, uh, information and, and discussion and stories. And that's what makes, that's what, you know, you can't, I, well, I think you can't, you, you shouldn't anyway, maybe do a yearly podcast on Lollapalooza. All right. Like it's a great <laughs> festival in Chicago, but I mean, come on, it's, it's just not the same thing. It's a legendary right. brand, uh, but it's, this is different. This is community. This is friendships. This is this is stories that that can come from every nook and cranny. You don't have to have special access. You don't have to have a great campsite. You don't have to be important people to have important mm-hmm. times and important stories. And and most people want to hear them because they're they're unlike you'll you'll hear anywhere else, anywhere else in the world, anywhere else in the galaxy. And I mean, I'm a crusty old salty guy. But you get me on that farm, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just like giggly. Like, yeah. come on, and and it's just weird. It's transformative, like on the spot, not necessarily well for your life too, for my life too. But meaning transformative in the moment, moment to moment can be transformative by the people you're around, and the and the things you're engaging in. Uh, I sound like a dork. No, no, <laughs> it's just it's so wild. It never. The, the, I don't want to call it, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, it, it, it's not surprising. Right. There's no element of surprise here, but it still blows me away. Right. And that goes back to the reaffirming thing. Like, it never stops. It ne- that part is always consistently true and real. Yeah. And it's important and it's strong and everybody feels it. Everybody that I talk to feels it. So... <laughs> As part of our um, job, if we'll call it a job, as if going to yeah. Bonnaroo is a job, uh, is to interview bands. And you will hear probably next week, I think our first band interview is going to be with Say She She. And uh, you, we, all three of us, were just blown away by New fan Pia. right here. Yeah, I mean, new forever, fan of the a forever band. fan. But, yeah. but Pia, um, one of the members... Just went on about a five-minute um, narrative about how Bonnaroo compares to Glastonbury and the community. I mean, we all sat there with our mouths open, and I, I think at one point I said, you just wrote the marketing campaign for Bonnaroo for the next 10 years. You know I mean? Yeah, she just great. nailed it. Uh, you're yeah, going to hear never that. Never set foot on the farm here, and then, and then she's talking like that. Yeah. Yeah, she said she figured it out in, what, an hour? hour and a half mm-hmm. of being on the site. Yeah. So you're going to hear that. I, 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 It's essentially what we're saying. Um, and then Romy, uh, the person who works for Bonnaroo, who was kind enough to drive us out to the beer exchange, echoed those sentiments. Uh, and you won't hear that for a couple of weeks. That'll be probably one of our last one. But to your point, Brian, and it's kind of what I, I'm saying, we keep hearing that kind of thing from everybody. 
um, who goes on, you know, on the regular and in and their camp, they all have a again a unique experience, but it's so much commonality. Uh, just this feeling of uh, welcomeness and positivity and 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 all of those sorts of things. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time on the social threads. Reddit really is really the kind of the place to go to get the best uh, discussion points on social. Not that any of them are that great, but it, immediately following, you're going to get a lot of uh, negativity because you always do in any major event, and there's plenty of that. And those are some small stuff we can discuss over the course of the off season. Don't need to talk about them a lot today. But there are there are you know it doesn't it, it is a very difficult weekend. Oh no question. It is very hard to do well, and even if you do it well, it's still hard. And that heat did kind of come in and knock some people on their ass, well, me included. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and and I mean my weekend. Uh, every intention of staying for. Through through to Monday, uh, we had such a great Thursday and Friday, which we'll get into here in a minute. I woke up Saturday morning and thought I've had every everything that I hope to do. I've done times a thousand, and I really don't want to ruin it. And so I hung around and hugged everybody and said hi, and then I left probably one o'clock uh, Saturday, and I don't regret it at all. Um, and I kind of figured out I don't have to do the whole slog. I mean, the one day thing or the, we've had campmates that would come and stay a couple of days and that just seems so foreign to me. I'm planning on all the whole time next year. Um, I'm so excited. I'm re-energized. It wasn't that I left because I was not having fun or anything. It was just, I did everything I wanted to do. Um, yeah. And that heat, I mean, it was hot. You know, the story. You know the story of the frog in the pot of water that you slowly turn the temp up and then I you use that example boy. many times in my life, Russ. It, that's what it was like this this year. I mean, it was every day the high was a little bit, a yeah. little bit hotter, a little bit hotter, and I just yeah. I mean, by the time Sunday came around, I was yeah. Even you it, left a little I had early. Had enough, yeah, even you a left bit, a little not, early. I, I was planning to stay till Monday, but. Yeah, Not Sunday. anything before Monday morning is damn early. Yeah, for uh, for this guy, <laughs> yeah. Russ. Yeah, you know the joke. But it really was the. I mean, it was a really mild week before in Tennessee. Uh, oh Maru. yeah, it's and the th- hottest week in the history of the world right now, and right. so it it while we all knew it was coming, it kind of snuck up sure. on everybody because the week started off mild and then it got as Russ just said a little hotter, a little hotter. Yeah. Holy geez, by Sunday in the chapel show, chapel roan. I mean, I could barely keep it together yeah. to make it through that. It was a, mm-hmm. it was an oven. It was a blazer. And then there's uh, some weather came in. I was gone by Sunday evening, by yeah. about six o'clock on Sunday evening. And oh boy, was Sunday just, I mean, so that's what a lot of the, the immediate negativity was is this, uh, I mean, this is dangerous. Right. And, it is right. It can be. Mm-hmm. It can be, and um, I think that kind of caught everybody off surprise uh, by surprise because they were so settled in to cool nights, right? Hot, warm days, oh. cool nights, and then all of a sudden Saturday rolls around. It's like, Phew. yeah, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> this Tuesday, is brutal. Tuesday and Wednesday were perfect. Oh my gosh. I mean, not too high. Yeah, I changed into uh, you know jeans and a hoodie like you know Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. Yeah, just had it been five days earlier, dropped. it would have been an unbelievable weekend. Oh but, yeah. So mm-hmm. pro tip: uh, hydration, hundred percent. Do it. Also, start walking weeks and weeks and weeks before Bonnaroo. That's me pointing at me. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I haven't. <laughs> I still don't do that, and I know that it's important because I've been sore since. Yeah, uh, I did better you, than I should have given the non-exercise that I did, uh, but that is no joke. Um, so that's sort of the the negative. It was hot. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, I thought the organization. We commented several times. Everything just seemed to go so smoothly. I know there were glitches. I know there were some security issues. Some guys were arrested for going through people's luggage and wallets and stealing. You know, as they were going through security. I saw a little bit of that yeah. on some of the Reddit stuff, and God, that's just just it sucks to hear yeah. and but it happens because you have to 
farm out so much of this help in so many different ways from volunteer right. to just secondary companies that there's so many people's hands in it. I'm shocked they pull it off ever. Yeah. Ever. To me, it's all, yeah. I always, you know, when I was doing restaurant reviews, you know, restaurants are going to have a bad day. You're going to have a bad, you know, the stove's not going to work. The chef's having a bad day. It's how you yep. deal with it and handle it. And I've always felt like Bonnaroo handles things like that pretty well. Um, I, oh, going back to the word salad kind of thing, I did want to say uh, I got a text from uh, our friend Brad Parker, who actually runs the Bonnaroo Festival, uh, just randomly the other night. And he's like, I can't wait to hear your recap. And I'm like, what did you think? And he, he said, I'm calling it Renaissance Rue. He said, we, we feel like we've... Uh, it, it's a new day. It's back. It's back. For real mm -hmm. this time. Yeah, and that's uh, that's kind of what we're saying, and I meant to say that at the beginning of the show because, you know, that was unsolicited. Uh, I, you know, obviously, you know, you can be cynical and say, well, he puts it on. No, he's a fan. He, he started as a volunteer. He gets it. He knows. And I don't think he'd lie to me. There's no benefit. So It's all a couple of that same kind of uh, – uh, sentiment from others that we were around close involved with the festival too i didn't think of it in those terms but it's just because i just didn't and i but now i, I it's it re it resonates right because it is kind of a i mean it's just like anything else from the from the pandemic shift things change and things change a lot and we're getting settled into those changes. And uh, before we get out of here, the census thing, uh, the uh, survey polling they sent out, we can spend a minute or two on that. Um, if that's right, just as much reason to understand that there's things are going to continue to shift and change as they as they play around with things and and try to see what does and doesn't work. Because uh, not everything does work perfectly. It right. never will. And like you said, the response is what matters uh, oh. the most. But, but we, but being back is something I heard more than a few times. Yep. And I agree with it. Agree and with let it. me ask you guys to this point, because I, I was sincere two weeks ago when I said, for this Bonnaroo, my goal is hug and howdy. This is the hug and howdy, and it's kind of a funny, you know, sound like I was being facetious, but I wasn't. My goal was to literally hug and howdy people that we have gotten to know either through this show or online or whatever. And, and sure. I did that and mm -hmm. it wasn't about the music. So w when we say, and when even Brad says Renaissance Rue, how much do you guys think it was music and how much was it what we're just talking about this whole community thing? I know in my mind what it was. It's not the music. Ross, go ahead. I yeah, I actually saw less music this year than any other year. I think, and part of it was the heat. I was trying to you know be selective in the shows that I go out to see because it was damn hot. But also, yeah, we spent so much time just hanging out with people and talking to people, and it was yeah, it's kind of weird to say at a music festival that the music is secondary or background noise, but that's pretty much what it was this year. So uh, absolutely, yeah, I agree with that, but I. I'd say that many years. I mean, the the running joke always was that I didn't ever go see any music at right, all, right. Uh, which is yeah. never true. I always did. Right. But um, we somebody we talked to, which you'll hear down the line in the Rue bus, said I would pay to be here, whether there was a band, one single band playing or not. Yeah, and Kevin. I mm -hmm. yeah, I could feel that all day long. I've thought that over the years, many different times. Like no matter what it was, insert what I was doing. I was like, this is as much fun as anything else I've ever done, and doesn't have anything to do with a band. Right. So as far yeah, as it, go ahead, Russ. Well, I was just gonna say those two years that were canceled. That's exactly what we did. You know, yeah. we got together just as if there was a Bonnaroo. Yeah. There wasn't really any music. We might have had a couple bands Good play, point. but. You know, those those years to me felt just as much like Bonnaroo as actually being on the real farm. So That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I'd pay to do this even if there was no music, just to hang out with y'all and them and everybody. So to that to that point and my thoughts on it, did it have anything as much to do? What did it have as much to do with? Uh, the cop out answer is it's sprinkled around pretty well as far as uh, what what made it great. But I think the music did have a lot to do with it. I was I was pretty surprised with how well things sounded, how things mm -hmm. flowed. 
I saw a lot of music this year, especially for me and my record on, around there. Um, I think that the music might have had a lot to do with it. The Post Malone show on Friday was as awesome as a thing, and I mean awesome in the the, word, the way it's more defined as anything I've ever seen in a live setting. Not the music, not the, I don't care about, I still don't care about Post Malone today any more than I did a week and a half ago. But the show, the spectacle was, whoa, yeah. okay. look at nice. this. Look how Agreed. heavy this hits. Yeah. And we just got here. Yeah. You know, this Especially, feels like yeah. this should be the finale. And it was the opening, you know, the, the, the of the, the headlining anyway. Yeah. And so I think that had a lot to do with it, too. I think people were really enjoying yeah, sure. the music. And I think the, the chapel story is going to define a lot of this. Um, every year you kind of think of what is that moment? I think that's one of them. So, yeah, I think it all. So uh, to recap that and, and Brad in our conversation mentioned that. So that's one of those things where Bonnaroo listens, right? You mentioned the census. We're going to, we'll get into that here in a second because it's important, but you know, the, for people just sort of joining in who kind of don't know the full story, Chapel Roan is this year's Noah Khan, Noah Khan uh, you know, they Mumford, s- Mumford from 15 years ago. Yeah, they signed her whenever, you know, probably a year ago, and she's blown up, and it was pretty clear to everybody that one of the tents was not going to be big enough. And uh, so the chatter was, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to see, there's safety issues, whatever, and they moved her to the witch stage, which was, uh, you know, not every... Not every festival is nimble enough to be able to adjust like that. Um, I thought it was one of the coolest things of big corporate America I've seen in a long time. And mm-hmm. it, I didn't think it was going to happen because yeah. I didn't think it was logistically possible. Yeah, there's With a lot. Four days, three days. Right. And it's, I just, we know because we got a little bit of the, you know, sausage making inside baseball stuff. It's not just a matter of somebody saying mover. You know, there are, contracts their agents there's labels there's egos, there's egos. Yeah, there's yeah. green sky bluegrass you think green sky bluegrass wanted it with they're an old school band they're old guys they probably got it better than anybody i'm just using the name people might heard of right you think they were like yeah sure we'll go play a smaller stage all good with us no you're they're set to play the secondary main stage on the on the sunday right it, they're they're one of the most well-known names in the new grass space they don't want to do that. No, but they've also probably, been around well enough to know that there's something coming back for them on the back end. They'll, probably the probably the worst example for me to use from the ego standpoint. But yeah. you didn't. They didn't just move Green Sky. They moved three or four. They right. had, this was a moving daily grind of a process that they. I just didn't think they were going to be able to do. And good on them for doing but it. But that's the kind of thing, and we've talked about it on here, Russ. You and I, especially, remember Moon River the festival here mm-hmm. when it got rained out and they immediately shifted over and put a concert together in our local municipal theater. Those are the kinds of things that stick with a fan, right? You know, those are the kind of things yeah. that say they got my back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good, that's a good way of putting it. They, that they, they're this place, these people, whoever they are, are looking out for me. Exactly. And, As a fan. And they're not just, yeah, they're not just get, refunds. Okay. Well, cool. That's a good start. Yeah. Um, but that's not that's just you know, that that that's formality stuff. But then to to shift pivot and still try to do something for you from an inner you know, just not leave you hanging out there. Right. That goes a long way to uh, me. Well, that exactly. goes a real long way. It kinda has that feel like uh if I were a fan, what would I want to happen? And and typically they they try to do that. Now, the cynic would say they had to make the move right. because of the safety and the logistics. The cynic would say they didn't, this was less about the fan and more about practicality. But I think it was both. Well, I here's the reality. Both. So here it is a week later. And instead of us sitting here saying, I only went to see Chaperone and I couldn't get close enough to even lay eyes on and her. And it sucked. It I hated sucked. It. I hated it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that was cool. They did the right thing. So, yeah. you know, good for them. Yeah, you're right. You can look at it all kinds of ways. But the reality is a week later we're talking about it was a good thing and not that it sucked. So good for them. Um, let's recap real quick. So, Again, as I said, our work, our plan was Thursday to do as much work as we could. 
We had interviews with uh, Happy Landing, uh, Gwar, Seishishi, and Michigander. All very cool. All fell together so well. Uh, but the day started as a as a I don't know, just great for us. We had gotten word that there was going to be a panel discussion with Ted Heinig, friend of the show, uh, longtime friend for many reasons. He's the president of AC Entertainment, and uh, and I don't know Tim's last name. Tim Tuba. Did you guys remember? N- My no, bad. Tuba. Yeah, Tuba was all I got. We yeah. look it and up we had never. Yeah. We were like that. We, that was the first thing that was funny. It was like, oh, guy named Tuba. I know, like, right? I was might as well be a guy that. named Taco. It makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. What kind of hell? The hell name is that? What the hell kind of name is that? <laughs> I mean, we can assume he probably was a tuba player, but I mean, you know, that's an interesting. Yeah, you know, I was thinking. Thank God he didn't play bassoon or something. You know. Uh, <laughs> Um, but anyway, he's the head of all festivals for C3, um, presents, and, uh, they were talking to the students from Belmont and Tennessee State and MTSU. MTSU had a big presence there. I was pretty Mm -hmm. surprised to see how much, uh, how many kids were there, college kids for, uh, their, their program. Yeah, Tim Smith Um, is Tim Tuba Smith is his. So this was like a, um. Bonnaroo University. Orienta- uh, yeah, an orientation yeah. of sorts, uh, industry panel kind of thing. Yeah, it's a Bonnaroo University. They're there for the weekend learning how to put on a festival type of thing. And uh, But anyway, one of the questions from one of the kids was, tell us about uh, one of your big failures and one of your big successes. And, uh, and Tuba shocked us by saying, well, since I see the guys from the What Podcast in the back of the room, I'll have to fess up to the Squarch. <laughs> to the Squarch. He was I'm sure that we, I'm sure I, I, don't, I wasn't around on a daily basis during the Squarch years on this show, but I'm sure there was some negativity oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, about that. And if anybody asked me, I would have shared my negativity yeah. about the Squarch. Well, he um, fessed up. It was funny. Uh, but getting a shout-out from him was great. And what a great way to start our day, right? Uh, uh, you know, the fact that uh, he knows who we are was kind of cool. But he, we talked to him after, and I've heard from others that uh, he thought it was kind of funny as well. But uh, So for to re recap the arch as we know it at Bonnaroo is an iconic part of the festival it's on all their posters it's the it's the image and um it rotted I mean I what I had heard was full of bees and rot and they burned it and it's uh, just made out of wood that's it it looked like it was more than wood but it was just wood and they burned it what about three or four weeks before the festival, and the internet blew up. Lost their mind. <laughs> Lost. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. I did think like, can't you just tear the damn thing down? Yeah, give well, us a piece. Not when save it's in, it, not sell as, it. You know, it was not like, when it's infested with murder hornets or whatever it was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so uh, Tuba came up with the idea of a a square, a rectangular version with video screens, which I thought was a good idea, especially at night. It's pretty cool. They could tell who's coming, show pictures, whatever. But it just didn't go well. It immediately was called the Squarch and uh, lasted about a year. And the arch yeah, is it, back. So. It actually looked really cool at night. Yeah, it did. And when we first saw it, it was in the middle of the day. And it looked dumb as anything we've ever seen <laughs> and it's i mean just because it, it was so primitive to what they right. what the vision was they wanted to do something with the arch to make it more technologically advanced and more sustainable long before they did it's just one of those kicking the can down the road things i mean you're right. not going to invest in something that would, they, it actually had i've seen the inside of the old wood arch it had it has electronic insides yeah. that were built in but that's it. Outside of that, the rest of it's just old wood, and uh, so th- it was. It was a really cool um, evolution of it because now it's my God. It's a it's it's a sight to see. Yeah. It is amazing. And uh, real quick, while it's on my mind, is back to talking about a lot of negativity that people are going to have that you just can't get away from because somebody's going to have a bad weekend. Is that this festival is so? It's got so many iconic visuals that the the pictures and the memories and the moments are so easily preserved, even with bad photography and bad phone pictures and bad one use pictures back in the day. 
even the worst of them preserve the greatness of it could be the worst weekend of your life, but right. the best part, you didn't get a picture of the arch when you were having a bad day. Right. Like, you know, you were having the best part of your day when you said, hey, take a picture of us at the arch. Right. You don't mm-hmm. think like, oh, I hated that day. It was so hot. You think, no, I love that day. Look at that beautiful yeah. arch or that beautiful fountain yeah. or that beautiful what stage. And that's, man, that stuff lives on for decades now. And uh, that arch is, so that that was a necessary evolution of that. And yes, I'm sure this show was like, the hell are y'all doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we were, yeah. Are y'all crazy? Yeah, you did what? Yeah. So, uh, well, but it was The fun. good news is the, the, the new one is metal, and he said it has a certificate, which means that it was actually designed and built oh, right, yeah. architecturally and engineering-wise. Uh, oh, collapsed. yeah. Yeah, up to LED yeah, codes and all code. these things. Mm-hmm. And it'll live, you know, for a long, long time now. Uh but yeah, that that that's a fun story, and that is, uh, it, it it looked great, beautiful, beautiful as always. So he will hopefully be a guest on our show coming up, and, and I guess that's sort of where I want to go. So those bands that we interviewed, uh, and I think we have an order. I I, I won't put them here because things may change. But in the coming weeks, we'll have our interviews with uh, Happy Landing, Guar, which was one of the coolest funny if that'll be a whole episode we'll, yeah, we'll talk more there, about that there ain't much there but there's plenty to talk about with those guys what they are what they do and the show itself yeah. i look forward to like dissecting that entire show yeah i mean the the entire guar show and experience and i know they've been there before but they really put a lot of effort in, into publicity this year yeah, they're so cool and they did a lot of uh little videos for online they did the did you guys see the they took over the video truck and like killed all the guys in the Bonnaroo video truck that, that no. they made for their soldiers. <laughs> we'll get into all that during the Guar episode. But it was like a never-ending PR weekend right for them, two, and go, it was great. Yeah, two things that I will sort of tease. We have a great story that involves Beth, our campmate, and Guar, which we'll, uh, we'll detail uh, when we do the full episode. But just to show you, <laughs> I thought it was so funny. I didn't know about the uh, them going into the media thing, but uh, somebody said they saw posters or, or an invitation to have tea with Guar. <laughs> tea. <laughs> yeah. I just think that's so hilarious. What could that? That got to. There's got to be some hidden something in you, there. Well, it's just if you know who Guar is, tea with Guar. I can't think of anything yeah. funnier. That ain't gonna be what it's gonna be. <laughs> no, maybe it was. I could, a little pinky up, <laughs> and then hit you in the face with. Yeah, it. cut a <laughs> cut a limb Spill off your... and uh, have a spot of tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool though it because. Was cool. uh, the first time around, I mean, I was like, "Oh yeah, that crazy Guar band's here." Yeah, and this year I paid a lot more attention because they paid a lot. Oh, more they attention. could. They gave so much time, and we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, and I went for the whole show, that whole set. Yep, yep, and got what one speck on the back of your shirt, right? Not even one. No. So disappointed it didn't get covered in fake blood. I was yeah. like, uh, like I said, "Get me away well, from that madness." Well, Twenty feet away uh, was our our buddy JB. Who wore an all white suit and shirt, and he got covered. Yeah, and I'm like, just just twenty yeah. feet away. If I had just been, I was up close. I was on the rail. I was on the rail, but I just wasn't quite it far enough in. Yeah, twenty feet is all it took. It's like a summertime Tennessee uh, sou- southeastern storm cell. It yeah. can get you right here, <laughs> yeah. and over neighbor, here you don't get a damn drop. Neighbor across yeah. the streets getting soaked. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we'll get into that in, in the probably next episode. May, no, we're going to do, well, like I said, I don't want to tie us down to, to uh, the schedule, but uh, we're going to have those in the coming weeks. I uh, hope to have Tuba on, hope to have Brad and Corey from C3 back on to, to sort of recap uh, what went well, what didn't. Uh, I know, obviously, they're excited about next year. Um, and then Friday, and this was, I said, number one on my to-do list and I meant it and it worked out amazing this year. Uh, the beer exchange, uh, mm-hmm. thanks again to Ken Weinstein and Romy Ken for, uh, allowing Romy to, um, drive us in a golf cart cause we had felt like 400 pounds of recording equipment to, 
and beer and whatever else to yeah, not to mention beer and to mention beer to trade. Um, and it's fun riding on a golf cart. And it's in that just place. cool. It feels yeah, we're big time. <laughs> we come rolling up like we're somebody. <laughs> uh, but Romy is so cool, and um, we'll have that. At, she's part of our interview uh, podcast, and that we'll probably do that our last show recapping 2024 will be an interview we did on the Rubus with uh, the the guys who sort of help or not sort of they do Mitchell and Kevin who put on the beer exchange um, Daniel from the Rubus was kind enough to let us uh, gather in his air conditioned bus and uh, what do we have a dozen people in there Kyle EDM Kyle was in there and uh it was very cool. That was my first experience uh, with the Rue bus, and it That's is right. it is something to be seen. Of while we're talking about iconic things you see at the uh, at the festival, I mean they've been around long enough. It's starting to fall into that uh, category oh, as well. Absolutely. So that that was really neat. And I, the last time I had been to anything that they had done was like five or six years ago. Like the very first time, uh, Taco. I don't know if you were there. That maybe you were, but. And, yeah, I was there. And, okay, so that that that's the first time I went. The last time I went, and boy, has it exploded in popularity and size and circus tent kind of size yeah. thing. And it was neat, man. People were having a big time. So we roll mm-hmm. up uh, with Romy. Uh, just has the best attitude. I just I like her so much. She's so cool. She's just like whatever. And I she stayed with us for the whole two hours and got into trading beer and. Uh, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, getting her in trouble. <laughs> um, but she's just cool, and and uh, that whole event. So we roll up, and like you said, they've got the circus tent, and I didn't look like you could get another person inside of that tent um, when we when we got there. And we got there what eleven fifteen? I mean, it was yeah, just, it was pretty early, and it was it was a bright sunshiny oh day. The heat wasn't quite where it got yet right. but it was starting to build and um and but it was still to me pretty comfortable uh because i didn't spend any time under the tent and didn't really feel like i needed to but it was uh yeah it was it was yeah you went uh, we all went right to the monkey bar first which was attached to <laughs> uh, the bus that's an impressive setup over there it's a it's a full-on bar isn't it it, it looks yeah i mean it it's got a feel of you're right next to the ocean <laughs> yeah, like you know true. like that that walk up tiki bar kind that's of thing true that's a good point yeah, that, that's it was that's it's got like yeah. the big like yeah. cylinder things like you're pouring all the drink oh, it was legit. really impressive it's legit really impressive. and uh you know yeah that's dave and richard that do the monkey bar and of course the rubus they help out to brooklyn and charlotte yep. and all them uh but yeah dave pre-mixes he makes special bonnaroo cocktails yeah what was that for the weekend passion bonnaroo bonner passion or something Something it lit but, you uh, up, yeah. That was, it was strong, yeah. <laughs> that was a that was a bit of a struggle day. Once I got to the to the, yeah, to the cocktails, as you said, the cocktails. as you said later, let's bring the recently sober guy to the beer exchange. Yeah, <laughs> what a good idea. Which in the beer thing, I don't care about, but boy, those cocktails yeah. are screaming at me. I was like, I'll go over here. But so you you mentioned Charlotte. We got to see Do- Charlotte and Daniel, Chloe, Evan Bonnaroo. Mm-hmm. Um, Skyler, Kyle, uh, Skyler, uh, JB, Kyle, yeah, uh, JB. Ben, Evan, other, other Ben and Evan, right? <laughs> Two Evans, there's uh, no, yeah, I think so. And, um, Ben and Eric, Eric, excuse me, Eric, and, uh, and of course, uh, Zach uh, from Chattanooga. I was so happy the guys from, as I called them, the Ruham bus, because you know. I'm good at malaprops. <laughs> yeah. Ruham bus. Um, Parker, Jake, and Michael uh, made the walk over and uh, gave me a hams. Um, and uh, we got to hang out with them finally. We have been ships in the night for, what, four years or so, where it's been like, hey, I'm in Centeru. Where are you? I'm, I was just oh, there. No. I'm back at camp. And uh, Yeah. I felt bad. Parker was texting me. Almost hourly, certain parts of the day, because he was like, "Hey, where are you at? I'm in Centeru. I'm here. I'm there." And I'm like, I, "You know, we just, just missed left. each other, yeah. but so we finally got to to link up at the beer exchange. Got and the hug great. and howdy, and that was yeah. that was number one on my list to do, and it was great and had a, a 
good yuck with those guys and got to watch um, um, Jake. <laughs> they bought a shotgun gun. Did you get to see this thing, Brian? Yeah. I guess not. So it looks like a giant squirt gun, right? But you pop it open, you put a 12-ounce can of beer, and you, <laughs> you uh, <laughs> ratchet, it pokes a hole in one end, and then you pull the trigger, and it pokes a hole in another, and then you shotgun it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I did not see that. It was so um, funny. So, so, like, super soaker-looking kind of yep, thing. exactly. Feeling kind of thing. And it, wow. Okay. All right. And, uh, no, I did not see that. Yeah, Parker, <laughs> uh, I I brought Hutton and Smith, and so he shotgunned a, a good shisht, which is a pretty high gravity <laughs> beer. So I can imagine <laughs> how that kinda feels like. That thing's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish I'd hit it, though. I did have a shot of Malort, uh, thanks to Mitchell. Oh God. Um, and uh, it tasted. Uh, let's see. I described it as if you if you varnished a tabletop and then licked it. That's pretty much oh, what my lord tasted. God. Like. So, yeah, it was all horrible. horrible. Who the hell were y'all hanging out with? Where was I? Horrible. <laughs> 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 oh, I think you, you you had just met Evan Bonnaroo. Yeah, you were still time, inside. So y'all the, were. The, uh, uh, so we were talking yeah. Pearl Jam and Grateful yeah. Dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were mm-hmm. being old men together. That's right. And we were doing shots of Malort. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was one. It was one step above diesel. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I used to joke. I would drink, you know, motor oil if it'd get me drunk. Uh, yeah. So I guess I at one time would have been happy to have tried it. And so um, Russ and I were out there handing out uh, stickers and meeting people, and that's where a lot of people were coming up and thanking us for the show and everything. And and I wanted to share. I met, and I don't remember his name and I apologize he'll remember he's listening to the show he's been listening for a long time uh, I was so stunned by what happened so but we're handing out the what podcast stickers and Russ and little stickers of all of our heads and you know we would hand them out and I handed one to to this this guy and and he was with a woman who's about my age and I handed her one and she looked at it like and said what's this and I said uh that that's me and I could see this look on her face that was like, both. What am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, what am I supposed to do with this? And you don't look anything like this. And I said, well, that was me 15 years ago and 100 pounds ago. And We were uh, we were young, much younger. Yeah, than and she's like, oh. <laughs> and as we were leaving later, I walked by and she said, thanks for the sticker. And I was like, damn, that hurt just a little. <laughs> well, it is an odd promotional it's, it's item, right? It's yeah. arrogant. And mer- it doesn't like, say anything around? on it. It doesn't have a web address or a, right. a QR scan code. It's just yeah. a picture of your damn face. Yeah, who walked around <laughs> handing out pictures of themselves, you know? And I, it is. Oh, she, yeah. she crushed me. It was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a pocket full of them and gave a couple out too. I I, I didn't feel yeah. as weird as I probably should have. Oh, it was nowhere <laughs> else on earth could you stand around and hand out stickers of your face <laughs> of your face and it be acceptable. Here you yeah. go. You want this? Yeah. yeah. No. I I, I think she was I, just mad you didn't autograph it for her. I, I think I joked later. We'll probably see that in a urinal somewhere. But hey, that's fine. <laughs> you get a lot of views. You get a lot of views there. Yeah, just put it right. Yeah, side some up. guy. Some guy said he's got me on his water bottle somewhere. That's cool. <laughs> Whatever works. It was just yeah. funny. Um, and so, yeah, so stickers. We were giving out stickers. I got several bracelets. Uh, I got one that says Camp Dad that I got from Chloe. I got one that says <laughs> what? And I don't remember. I'm so sorry. I don't remember who gave me that one. And, of course, Mitchell, a uh, friend of the show, Mitchell, who's so funny, uh, very kindly said, can I give you drugs? And he gave me a bracelet that says drugs. He, that he <laughs> I'd like to have that. That that is something I have never been gifted or been around the exchange of the bracelets. Yeah, it's just one of those. Just it's just happenstance deals. I've I've never had one. I, I've never been given one. I've never worn one. And I see them every year. I'm like, wow, those look so cool. Yeah. And everybody's gifting and sharing and somehow that's one i've missed out on every single year i've never had a bracelet yep. 
And then so if you see me I, next year, bring me a bracelet, please. I feel left give out. Give Brian a bracelet, please. I feel left yeah. out. You know, the cool thing he'll is they put a, in the He'll give time. you a sticker of his face. I'll give you a picture of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put in the time to make those. I mean, that's really, really very, yeah, very cool. Uh, I, I got one that says PBR. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pretty happy never, with that. never gotten one, man. I've, Oh, to, right. to the beer we'll exchange. That. So I brought Hutton and Smith, which is a Chattanooga uh, brewery and delicious. And of course, Russ, you uh, you, you were very diligent in picking out uh, <laughs> six of your very best PBRs <laughs> for that yeah, day, yeah. right? There was, a, there was mm-hmm. a lot of angst over which ones to take. The freshest ones <laughs> available. Well, I ended up drinking them all. <laughs> <laughs> no PBR for you. Yeah. All for me. But what a cool event. Uh, I guess we should recap. If you didn't make it, the Beer Exchange, I think, uh, started, what, 11, 14 years ago, something like that. One one guy said, can I bring some beer uh, to the uh, Mitchell and Kevin? And they're like, sure, we like beer. And the guy didn't show up for 14 hours because apparently he stumbled into a mushroom field or something and uh, – <laughs> happens it happens and then walked up that night is it too late and so anyway it's gone carrying from, a huge cooler yeah you know full of beer too as, as mitchell said walked in like atlas right with <laughs> yeah <laughs> on his shoulder <laughs> yeah. what do you say 11 people that first one or am i Something getting like my that, 11s yeah. and my 14s it was it was very not few. many anyway yeah and, and this this last time was packed massive yeah, that was very, very, very nice turnout. Very, and the, just their overall. That's over in group camping, well, which really, I had never seen. I'd never seen before. Sorry, Barry. I was just going to say, am I not right that it sort of led to group camping? Uh, the fact that uh, maybe I think so. Yeah, because I mean, group group camping hadn't been around that long. No, I yeah, and I think Camp Rettery was a thing even really before group. Well, that's they what I'm saying. Kind of I think Camp Rettery self assembled. Yeah. yeah, they they organized as a group, and and again, the Bonnaroo people saw, saw a cool thing yeah. happening and said, "This is a good idea. Let's how can we help?" And, and well, the what they've got going on over there, I don't know what the rest of GA looks like, but that is impressive. Yeah, and mm-hmm. the amount it, of it don't or- look like that. The amount of organization and the amount of cooperation that go that must go into something like that. We talk about camp nut butter. Yeah. Camp nut butter ain't no. nothing. No, <laughs> nothing. We got we've had the worst campsite you've ever seen compared to what these guys are doing, and we've had some pretty damn good yeah. ones. So this is really cool stuff. Yeah, really cool stuff. And that's why it was so high on my list. That and to see everybody and uh, if there. <laughs> There aren't. I don't have too many uh, regrets. Too many I didn't get to do. I didn't. We didn't get to hang. I didn't with repeat, repeat. Uh, Kristen and Jared were there Saturday, I think. Uh, yeah, I texted them and and could never meet up with them. Yeah. I looked for them. I went to the Jive Talk show, which was a highlight for me. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, yeah, I wanted to see Jared and Kristen. And uh, Brian, you you've got a great story on your podcast about the beaches. That was high on your. That that went we'll, from bad to good. We'll circle back around on that one eventually, but yeah, I was borderline stalking them uh, on the on the on the farm. I, I had a little intel as to where they might be from a couple different people. Taco being one of them. Uh, that was wild you're, and you're really, welcome. Really, thank you, and really, really fun. Um, but go ahead, Barry. Yeah, you. All right, so that, yeah, I'm just uh, you know, I'm just trying to think what else I missed. I made a bunch of notes. Let me go through here real quick. Uh, just because I think it's funny while I was going through the Reddit, uh, uh, I was seeing all these people. And again, it kind of recaps what, what I've been saying this whole time is everybody has their unique story, but there's so much commonality. Uh, I saw a great post from a father and son who've been going every year for uh, 10 years. And, and apparently people call them church boner. And, and I mentioned that just because right. I grew up Catholic and as soon as I saw that term, I'm like, okay, <laughs> but I've never heard it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, Church Boners is there every year. They, they uh, Their camp is right across from the Arch. I don't know how they manage to get that spot every year, but they're always set up there. Church Boners are there every year. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah two things that just, you know, again, another story similar to we've heard a hundred times, but Church Boner is funny, and now I can't <laughs> unsee it, you know, kind of thing. Uh, our friend Bron Aruvian got the uh, did the run, which I think is just about the stupidest 
who why do you want to run at Bonnaroo but they do they the more I get to know runners the more I understand it a little bit yeah. um because I have a lot of friends that are really crazy running people yep. and um I I do somewhat understand it nah, I get but it. not teasing. really I'm teasing but no I'm not really do it every day and it's like a drug to them if they don't do it it's great I mean I only understand it because they tell it to me like that yeah, it's not yeah. like I identify oh yeah it. they're like vegans you know how do you yeah. know somebody's a vegan just like oh my god it. I haven't run I haven't run today yeah, well good yeah. right it's a good day then they're right tell you they're yeah. a vegan uh, but he got uh, he signed up to run. And got there first in line, and his number was 420, which <laughs> was picked 420. <laughs> so funny, Perfect. and he was so proud. So Only 666 yeah. would have been better. Good for know? him. <laughs> um, for, for picture purposes. We got to hang out in a different way this year with the Velans. Uh, Kai and Tara have been on our show uh, a couple of times. I don't think Joe has actually been on, though he might have once or twice. But uh, Joe, Joe ain't much into stuff like this. He's yeah. he, he, he's kind of like likes to just take care of all the important stuff and yeah, go s- sit on the lawn. But chair. they did. Uh, they had to camp in GA, though they had guests. They didn't have a camping pass, so they came and hang out, hung out. Kai has been going since she's eleven. I think she's uh, if she's not eighteen, she's almost. Almost. We're going to have her on again because she gives us such a great perspective. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that because this is her first time in GA. Yep. Yep. And mm-hmm. um, and she's been going. I think you're right about that. Eleven. I mean, a long time. Yep. And that's just a, a, a perspective you're not going to find very often. Uh, just those ages. Period. That's right. Let, so let's leave that part out. And then also, she's had a very, you know, a very cushy yeah. kind of uh, yeah. of existence on the farm, <laughs> and she's very used to uh, things being quite simple. Yep. And this was, boy, I, 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 I know her. I mean, I know her as much as you can know a teenager who's growing up around you. I know she'll say the right thing and she'll think about it and craft it as well as as she possibly can. But I know she was like, "This sucks." Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just a, such a different. If just nothing else, you know, waking up and eating a port of John quickly, and yep. um, that'll be fun to just see. But I know she had fun because I was around them. Oh yeah, and I know she. I watched her mm-hmm. have fun. So uh, yeah, you don't have to have VIP or you know whatever you want to call that to have fun at this. Yeah. As a matter of fact, VIP sometimes is. Shout, shout out Bad. to her boyfriend Julie, and I think it was his first Bonnaroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a cool kid. Her boyfriend, yeah, so from cool. that perspective mm-hmm. as well, she was uh, cool kid. Uh, you know, and I don't think I'm telling tales because I don't know the person's name and I won't say it. But she came with a friend last year who didn't make it past what day two. Uh, this year she yeah. was with her boyfriend, and it was his first time. My point in saying that is Bonnaroo is not for everyone. Uh, yeah. It is. They not. had to drive out and take her, Correct. take her, take her out because it was like I'm just this. Yeah. This isn't working. No matter your age, seventy 100%. or seventeen or twenty seven, right. it, it doesn't work. So for I, I'm looking forward to getting her uh, her take again. Uh, what else? Those are my main things. Yeah, I've just got a few things I jotted down. I wanted the attendance appeared to be very healthy. Yep, mm-hmm. very healthy. Great point. I'm um, glad you I'm, brought that up. I'm not good at you know at estimating crowds and i get really irritated when people try to we know here locally that happens terribly within our media but it it was not light it was not light it was very healthy crowd i mean i would guess 70 plus strong well including like everybody on the farm 70 75 yeah i was i I was told i don't know if it's official or not but the source is solid 70 and that was uh day of and and that's one of the things we want to talk to Brad and Corey about is again the day the day uh, passes. There's no question we were told by Brad that you know he was told on our show said they were not going to do day passes and then rescinded that within a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm I don't again I don't think I'm talking out of turn. Day passes saved them. Uh, yeah, it would yeah, have, regardless of your your feelings on whether they should have done it or not, it definitely increased sales and it no saved question. them. Saved it, it, it would appear that's true. And after reading something I've heard before in the past, recently regarding the Black Keys failed stadium tour here in the states, that for uh, for most people's measurements, that if you don't sell twenty percent of what you're wanting for your event, so twenty percent to capacity. In the first 
couple of days, mm-hmm. then you're you're kind of messed. Like you're you've got a failure on your hands if you can't knock out a good solid twenty to twenty five percent of your entire attendance right. initially. And I, my guess is is they didn't reach whatever that number was they needed to be. They didn't get anywhere near it. And quickly going to those one and two days. I believe gave a second day, kind of a second lifeline of right. All right, well now we get to try again. Right, and they might have reached that number, maybe far surpassed that number, and then as things go along, you know, then it, it sales turn into whatever they turn into. But I felt like it was not a a uh, a crowd that was too much, and it certainly wasn't too light. I've been there when it was ninety ninety thousand, right. ninety to a hundred on record. That would be like 2006 or five or something like that early on when they tried to boost the sales. And it was noticeable. It was like, there's too many damn people here. Yeah. Yeah. Can't and that was not the case. That, that was not yeah. the case here. Uh, yeah, there's lines. You know, I've uh, there. Yes. Yes. You're going to deal with lines. But I thought it was a very healthy crowd and I think very uh, wonderful for, mm-hmm. you know, the bottom line. Yeah. What well, you said you had a couple of notes with that. Uh... Uh, attend it. Well, I, well, prices on, on concessions, um, nothing new. We, we haven't already talked about, I thought it was pretty interesting. The $5 mystery beer line. Do you guys see yeah, this? I, I did. It. I never, I wanted to get in there and try it. See what well, it was. Well, everybody else did too. Was, I know. Couldn't even get close. It's but. amazing the line that people will wait in to get a $5 <laughs> beer. Can you imagine if you didn't sell $16 Coronas, disgusting Coronas that most people, that was a thing I read, This you got to really sell this garbage Corona. Um, <laughs> sorry if you love Corona, but. Imagine if nobody loves Corona. Sold a Corona for not fifteen dollars. How many exactly. more of those you might sell? Right. And this is to every festival. And this is less industry talk and more like festival industry talk and more alcohol industry talk, which I am very involved in and know a lot about. And I think they are the biggest culprits of the, the problem here. Uh, but a five dollar beer, boy. You thought they were giving them away yeah. the yeah. line over there, and I think that's all the proof you need. To show you that you you're gonna move product quickly if you drop the damn prices, guys. Agreed. You're already making a ton of money. Now, I, the p- spicy pie, Nova, all these were up a little bit, but as far as I'm concerned, if I can get fed and I'm good for most of the rest of the day for ten, eleven, twelve bucks, whatever, like whatever it is that I just purchased, there's no five dollar lunch anymore. All right, right. it's a ten dollar right. lunch. If you can get lunch for ten, twelve bucks. Then that then that's a, that's fine. You're not eating ten pieces of pizza. You're not eating three pieces of pizza. <laughs> you might want three Coronas though. So, I really wish that festivals in general would take a look at this alcohol pricing and just realize you're hurting yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're hurting your sales, and and because you're charging too much, and you're hurting your your vendors who are trying to you know, hey, fifteen percent tip. Uh, no, right, right. You know, like, mm-hmm. come on. You know. How did you guys think Thursday? With pretty lights on the wet stage for the first time on a Thursday night. Thought it was great. Yeah, thought it was great. I just did about an hour and a half of it, probably um, from a a pretty solid distance um, to the left over by the bees. We we talked about the bees on here. You guys know what the not bees official, are, right? No. Yeah, the the <laughs> stay away from the left side of the wet stage because the bees will get yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brought that up to I was with I was with somebody. Uh, uh, tell a little bit on the regular podcast. I won't go too far into it. And she was like, we were on that left side. She's like, she's on the phone. How do I explain to them where we are right now? I was like, do they know about the bees? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, nudge, the hell are you talking about nudge, the bees? Nudge, wink, wink. It's like, the bees. forget it. Yeah. Forget it. Just tell them they're never going to find that's us. Funny. Uh, but I, that's about where I was for, for pretty lights on Thursday night. And it was just, it was basically exactly what I expected. Music that I didn't necessarily need a whole lot of, but boy, did it look and sound great. Yeah, it looked uh, and sound great. Also, while I'm thinking of it, uh, she's okay. But another tip: uh, I mentioned the hydrate and walking. But if you're gonna bring a propane cooking device, oh, yeah. be careful. Uh, I heard y'all talking about this. What? What? What, so what did I miss? Here? I got back uh, to camp Friday or th- was it Thursday or Friday? I think it was. I think it was Friday. Friday. 
and one of our campmates was going over to basically gather up um, what was left in uh, a friend of his daughter's camp and put it in a car to secure it because a propane cook, uh, cooktop exploded while she was trying to use it, and she was airlifted to Vanderbilt. Uh, oh, wow. Blew up the tent, blew up their chair, burned everything. Uh, by the next morning, she was home, uh, so she was okay. But um, Oh, you know, wow. Just, yeah, yeah, I, miss, I miss this one 100%. Glad to know she's okay, um, but also be careful if you've, you know, kind of goes to that, um, our tip of uh, try all your stuff before you get there. You know, put your tent up so you know how. Make sure you know how to turn these things. I don't know what happened. I'm, yeah, I'm just could be something should. with the heat, but those things are built to to withstand the elements. Yeah, but they, you know, so that probably was some operator so error. Yeah. Yeah, that's if, what I'm if saying. If you've never lit, if you've never lit a propane stove before, maybe try to read up on how to do it safely. Or, you know, and yeah. follow all the steps, things like that. So, uh, but what a nightmare. Uh, but she's okay. So, um, oh, that's good. yeah. Barry, I think you and I saw that. Well, we did, we listened to the Pretty Light Show from camp. Yep. But I, I didn't go to it. But yeah, uh, no, it sounded it great. Well. And uh, mm-hmm. I just was, you know, again that Thursday night, first time on the wet stage. I didn't. Yeah, that Joe, that Jolene uh, grabbed my attention. I figured it probably would grab yours, Barry. Yep. Um, it, that little sample that was in there was was pretty cool. Um, but that's you know that's the kind of stuff he does. Does that you know all that? Yeah. Through the sunrise set, tons of that kind of stuff too. So that was pretty cool. All right, right out, uh, Russ. What else is on your list uh, that you wanted to get to today? A lot of you know, we have so many stories that we'll share when we talk about them. These other interviews, but uh, anything yeah. specifically today, the recap that you wanted to talk about. Uh, Thursday, you know, we did see Michigander a little bit. His caught his show since we uh, also interviewed him, so we'll talk about more there. I saw a little bit of the Francis Comes Alive show, which I thought was really good. Um, do we want to talk about Monroe? I was going to say, uh, two, yeah. yeah, two things about that, uh, and I'll let Brian address it. Uh, uh, Monrovia is a Chattanooga guy played with uh, Carl Caldwell. Summer Dregs and uh, Tyler Martelli, uh, very, very, very talented uh, musicians. Uh, it was an interesting trio. Uh, but Brian, I, I'm I'm going to guess you have a tip for any local musicians who are going to be playing Bonnaroo <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah, tell us you're going to be there. How about that? <laughs> Let a brother. How about that for a tip. <laughs> Let somebody know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my God! I mean, these are friends of mine. One of them, in any way, Tyler, um, the acquaintances, the others, and yeah, I see on Facebook or wherever it is on Thursday or whatever morning, Friday morning. Friday. Hey, I'm playing Bonnaroo today, like, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, this is kind of like you know, focus brain type kind of thing, narrow casting. You know, they're so focused on what they do, you know. The last thing he's thinking to do is, oh, hey, Brian, I need to make sure and give him a ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But come on. I mean, maybe a little, you know, come on, just a little bit. Uh, it's a, and we joked about it yep. and had fun with it. Um, but yeah, there, that was fun. That was neat. I mean, we, I, everybody from the city of Chattanooga was at that show, it felt like, and it was light yeah. attended. And while, while we're there, the Who stage yep. is a considerable upgrade from anything I've ever seen. Yep. And maybe this isn't brand new what they're doing there. But it is just a like a scaled down tent. This yeah. or that. Yeah, it was great. It's, it's exact. Yeah, it's, it's just tent. if you didn't know any better, you never seen it. Take that, scale it down uh, to eighty percent. Yeah. And it is. It's got great. Uh, it's got video boards. It's got great sound. Now there, the sound guys were struggling on a few of the shows. We won't. No reason to dig too far into that. But. It was a really nice looking stage. Like that was nothing to sneeze at. Like, oh, you're on the little tiny stage. Because we've seen, remember the Miller Light True or the oh, Bud yeah. True True Music Village or whatever. Like Man, a truck. you didn't play. Platform. You didn't play yeah. Bonnaroo. Yeah. <laughs> you brought your guitar to the middle of the dusty dirt <laughs> with five people. Like that. To me, yeah. I would have been disappointed as a performer. This stage now. This is a really cool little this stage, is, and yeah. if you're playing on it, you should. That's something to be proud of. It was cool. 
Good for them. Um, and Monrovia is uh, where is he from? Liberia. Yeah, that that's a story I still need yeah. to get my around better. Um, it's cool, my head around better. But that was neat, and um, it was a sleepy, you yeah, know, a little slow kind of set. But that's good. what he does. It was cool. And it was fun. All right. Uh, as far as list stuff though, this census we want to spend. Oh a yeah, yeah. We, good. Thank you for bringing that back. Um, the the my my biggest thing to just start with before when we don't need to go too far right now, but is I just my disdain for polling. I just I could go on for a while on that one and I won't but I just think ta- I mean tainted and slanted polling tends to be where I most of these go which always just it irritates me because there are real questions and there are there are there's information to be gathered from polling that's important clearly but when you like I just took a screenshot it's very short if you want to take it and I suggest everybody here does uh, but this is just a 10 to 15 question. Who do you want to see? What do you think here? But stuff like this. When it comes to main stage headliners, do you prefer more current acts or legacy acts? Right. A or B? Legacy or current? That's your only choices. Bro, I don't have an answer for that that way. We can discuss this a long time, but it's not as simple as that. Right. First of all, it's both. It's both legacy and yeah. current. I think everybody would a agree with that. Yeah. It's just that's a perfect example of a a a just a a junk data question. Like to me, you're not going to get any answers that matter from that. And maybe people smarter than me are doing it. Let, what's another one, just real quick? Do you prefer? Eh, well, I don't. I don't need. Well, that. one of the things that sort of got me was, and I I, I tend to agree with you, uh, Brian. Is, is I'll use the example. Years and years ago, uh, uh, a Catholic high school uh, hired a new principal, and he kept hearing from people that they wanted uniforms. They wanted the kids to wear uniforms. I mean, it's all he could hear. And he did a survey, and it turns out it was only like 10%. It was just some really, (laughs) really loud parents. The rest of the people. Yeah, what kid wants uniforms? Well, I mean, it wasn't the issue. My point is that loud, you know, vocal group can sway things like one of the questions on this survey is if it was two weekends would you go you know and my fear with stuff like that is you can get you know say 90 percent say yes that doesn't mean 90 percent bought tickets or will buy yeah. tickets they just have a strong opinion about that kind there's of so thing. many ways that right. these pollings to, are just junk data to me and that's that was the most polarizing question on there was the, the, the two weekends thing. Let me just stop right there. Just just stop. Shut that down. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah, don't. Just stop with this madness. Please don't. When I when Coachella started doing this, uh, or when I first found out about it, anyway, I don't remember uh, the history of Coachella. I don't study it, but I was like, two weekends. Yeah, who can do who that? Who the hell's doing this? Who wants? And to we do live that? an hour away. We are pe- the people who could do that. But I I'm mean, not going to two weekends of Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo, yeah. don't do it. How like, is it? it doesn't... How is Beth? You know, our our Beth, who comes from Washington State, she isn't making to or, yeah. or staying in Nashville for three days during the. I mean, you know, I don't yeah. truly believe that they have any interest in doing that. Um, no. I I think they're just te- just feeling it out, and that's fine. But boy, did that get did that get all the socials going? And that that is a quick, just hard no. Yeah. Like that's just what are you doing? Yeah. You know, it's already. Jesus, I mean, you've already made it upwards of five days, which is now people have settled into nicely, and it works right. pretty well for a lot of people. So, Russ, am I wrong? Uh, mm-hmm. If you subscribe to their mailing list, you can get this survey. They'll, they'll. Uh, except for Barry. Except for me. <laughs> I didn't except for you, apparently. It. Well, the, this was not just to people who attended. This was to er, anyone, anybody. whether you've been to Bonnaroo or not. It's the f- they put this out on social media. Yeah. I mean, they linked it everywhere. So if it, you can go find it and take it, and it doesn't matter if you've you know, right. been Well, that goes to Barry's point. Do we want people yeah. who don't go having a, an opinion yeah, can. on this? So I asked Brad about it. Depends it. on who he, you ask. It is the first time they've done it where it's to everybody, not just uh, they've done polling in the past, but it's typically that year's attendees. Yeah, ticket person. So this yeah. is anybody and everybody, um, number one. And, and everybody does that. If you pro- buy something, sure. they're going to send you additional you know, surveying. I mean, that just happens. And uh, I won't say the number, but he had a number that they're hoping to get, and they were already 
a quarter of the way there by half of the first day. So don't, what they do with it, I don't know. That's something we'll ask him. You know, I, yeah, that'll be a fun conversation. The idea mm-hmm. of asking people their opinion, I think, is a good one. It's how you do it that's always worrisome. And and I even said to Brad, you know, you always get. I I, I love the people and Brian. We've seen it with Riverbend. You know, every time Riverbend comes up, how many times on the socials would you have somebody say, "I've never been. It sucks." <laughs> I mean, I love those people, but the, you know, oh, but they got to offer their opinion. And never been, never gonna go. They're the loudest. Yeah, they're the loudest. It's amazing. So, all right. Uh, one one other thing, real quick, guys. On a, as far as list goes, because I did have a couple people, one in particular, who had said, "I, I hope you guys talk about this." And I didn't get an, into the weeds too much. Was um, trash collection and just the cleanup of of the festival all the way around. It didn't appear to me that clean vibes is any more involved with this festival. I, I don't know if that's 100% true, but it didn't look like it. Uh, but I just I've heard a lot of people talking about just kind of place being a little bit trashed. Mm. I didn't quite see that as much, um, I, but I also wasn't there like I've been early sometimes on a Sunday or a Saturday morning when I can get a real view of, right. of what the place looks like. And then the amount of trash left after the festival, I think was the main point that I was uh, that somebody was asking me about through uh, direct messaging on social, and I just think that's a thing every year. You know this this idea that leave it like you found it stuff. Phew, yeah, that's fun to say. Yeah, that's not a thing. I mean, I always try. I will say the shower. Well, situation. I do too, and I think some do also. But also, when you've got people who feel like they've been being ripped off, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's going to happen, and you've been beat up by the sun. And you've had all you can take, and you're five, six, seven hours from home. You think you're going to mess around with that pop up that costs you seventy nine dollars? No. Yeah. And, you know that that's not happening. And I, I'm not going to blame that person for that because there's somebody paid to come behind you and clean that up, and then we sell it to other people yeah. in Chattanooga. So yeah. it's kind shout of an old the, ecosystem. Gear closet. Yeah. Shout out to the gear closet. gear closet. They they always come in and clean all that up, and then they resell it, and then the proceeds go to uh, charity to uh, my waterways, which we've. Talked to them on the show before. Yep. Which is Beth, pretty neat. Yeah, she's great. So I didn't uh, see it myself as far as the place not being cleaned up after as much, but I some people were, were concerned about that, so I figured it was worth I, mentioning. I could see that. Yeah. I could see it worth mentioning. But I did see after leaving the what, because I, I left the what twice after full sets, after Chili Peppers and after Pretty Lights. I think I stayed till the end of that. And the people out there running around with the bags, grabbing garbage, they were there. Yeah. I saw them. With my own eyes. I can't tell you if they did a good job or not. Didn't see the finished product. But they were there. Yeah. Sometime one of these shows, maybe on down the line when we've got time and, and no topics, I want to talk about technology and how they've changed over the two decades that we've been going. But I, I have to say the shower situation was was awesome. It was really nice. This year for us yeah. anyway. I mean, it's always been pretty good. Yeah, but better this, than this, most, but it was great. This is, this is pretty good. And then... Um, just quickly, I just wanted to throw out, um, without any in-depth like preview or re- or uh, recap or review, is I saw a lot of full sets this year, um, mm. all of Post Malone. I was with people who I had just mostly met, and one was a mild acquaintance, but never really actually met with, so it wasn't like a total stranger. But it was a, hey, Brian, I listen, and I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that kind of thing. And half of them, including really pretty girls, <laughs> left. <laughs> and I was just at, I was in such a good spot and enjoying the Post Malone show so much, I didn't leave. And I couldn't, nice. you know, I never thought I would have said that going into it. So I saw all the Post, I saw all the Chili Peppers start to finish. Boy, did it bore the hell out yeah. of me, just like I knew it would. <laughs> just like I knew it would. But it sounded great. And if you loved it, then you, then it was, it was exactly what you were there for. Uh, all of Cage the Elephant, oh my God, what a great rock and roll band. I mean, just what a great 21st century rock and roll band. All of that, all of the beaches, all of J-Rad, and all of Chapel Roan. Nice. And the beaches show, I mean, you could see it. In the, they were waiting for Chapel just like everybody else. They were just like, let's burn through these songs. <laughs> yeah. um, everybody that was at that tent, this tent, 
this was just waiting to just shift and go over to chapel. And they even said, like, all right, well, on to chapel. <laughs> they jumped <laughs> off the stage. Nice. And I saw them posting on their socials. They're out in the field like everybody else. That's funny. Quickly, what popped into my head here, too. Quickly, quickly. Uh, the platinum seating mm. areas in the tents feel like they got to go. Yep. Uh, they're not getting used from my mm. experience, which is limited. Which is limited. I'm sure there's I've, a f- few tents that had big shows that got filled up with platinum members. The ones I was at, I was 40 rows out just to get as, and I am there early because that damn platinum thing is taking up space that nobody's using. If it's getting used, I'm not going to have much to say about it. That's just fine. In there. Yeah, people pay, it. well, yeah, this guy, <laughs> he's platinum wherever he goes. <laughs> I had no Some of us in. aren't that <laughs> slick, Taco, and it it just I don't know. It really took away from the yeah. from the the gathering up front. You're gonna have, we're gonna have VIPs. We're gonna have exclusivity, and that you can purchase. And I'm okay with that. But if it's not getting used, you need to try something else. Well, and it's not a good look for the band if they there's a photo of the crowd and the whole front is empty. Right. You know, that, that was the Beaches show. I was on the yeah. rail, but the mm-hmm. rail was three rails yeah. back. Oh, wow. And I didn't and, see anybody uh, using the uh, VIP seating either. The uh, chairs. Oh, the bleachers. Right. I think we talked oh, about no, it. The ch- I, oh, the hill. No, not the hill. Out in on the right side of, to like the witch. They had a whole oh, okay. platform, and to me, I didn't it, pay attention. To me, it just looked like a giant skillet. It looked so. Oh hot. yeah. Oh the, yeah. oh, you're talking about the bleachers, yeah. Yeah, I, the the witch, yeah. So I couldn't even imagine how hot that <laughs> aluminum. I'm not saying don't sell exclusive uh, yeah, ticket sure. tiering and options. I'm not, but I think that the way that that is carved into those tents, those are already really small, and I forgot this. Is considerably smaller than that. See, thank you. The tents. Thank you. I've asked that. <laughs> considerably and Jeff Quayar smaller. said no. They were the same size, and I'm like, no, they're not. The that is a it's it's it's. They might have been in the past, but the, you I, know they I tear those down and build them every year. So I think maybe they, they build them differently. I think they used to be, and this year I was like, this is very noticeably yeah, smaller. It is smaller. Um, I agree. Yep. But either way. Either way. It's not that big, is my point. So when you yeah. take away so much yeah. space in such a premium spot, right. that's a little annoying. Um, I agree. Those screens didn't do a hell of a lot of good in some settings either, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'd rather have them than not. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to complain about that. But I'm glad you mentioned the Platinum thing because I, I caught about three shows of post and then went straight to this tent for the Mars Volta. I got right into the Platinum area, and it wasn't heavily attended. And while I was waiting, that was a great show, by the way. I stayed for the whole thing, um, and I, and I, I guess it kind of worked to my favor that you know, Thundercat and T Pain were at the same time because you know it really wasn't heavily attended, probably as much as it would be. But while well, I was sitting there, yeah, go, no, keep going. Sorry. While I was sitting there waiting, uh, David Bruce walked up, and he was he actually came in the area and asked, "Hey, is it okay if I come in and take photos?" And they initially said, uh, no, no photos. Uh, apparently, the Mars Volta management or whatever requested no photos at all. Hmm. So he uh, he was originally turned away, but then she saw his uh, crew chief wristband. I don't know how he got that. But she pointed that out and was like, oh, why didn't you tell me you have a crew chief? You can go anywhere you want. So he got in and got into the photo pit to take photos. And after about three songs, he said he looked up and probably either their manager or somebody off to the side pointed at him and said, you know, waved no, no photos. So he, uh, you know, kind of, okay, sorry. So he was the only photographer for that show. That, that so well, that's the thing I don't want to spend a lot of time on here because a lot of people won't know what it means. But who can go in those little side, side sliver things? Bonner has spent 20 years, and I ain't figured this out. No, like that's they, they, every year. You, you can be the, you know, the band's manager, and they won't let you in. <laughs> yeah. and, and then you can just be some jackass who just walks right in, and it's no problem. Uh, but that's, you know, that's not that big a deal. The, I'm glad you mentioned T-Pain. Um, mm-hmm. Boy, if that, to me, that felt like the biggest buzz of the weekend before Sunday got there, is that that T-Pain show was at night, and it was really cool, 
and it was huge attended at the witch. I wasn't there, but I was earshot. Boy, people seem to be crazy excited for the T Pain show, and it sounded mm -hmm. like it delivered. But you were off doing your Thundercats and uh, Mars Voltas, right? So you I didn't see Thundercat. I was there for the Mars Volta yeah. the entire set. Oh, that's right. And that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of that, Super Jam. Did it, either of y'all do that? Mm -mm. No. Not another year and another year without a Super <laughs> Jam for me. I didn't. I didn't go because I went to the uh, Boot Scootin' Boogie Nights show. But I think I you made the right decision. Past. I think I did too. I did walk past and I did hear them. They were doing a cover of uh, One Arm Scissor by At the Driving, which I thought was cool. Yeah, the fact that it was emo um, was the main theme. It mm -hmm. wasn't going to yeah, do a whole thing. lot for me. I could have had fun with it. I certainly could have, and somebody could have talked me into it. But yeah, didn't. I I stayed for a couple minutes just because I heard that song. But then I had to. I did go on to the. Uh, who stage for Boot Scoot and Boogie Nights, and I'm glad I did. I got right up front. I know Corey saw me, uh, and that was such a fun show. And this was not, you know, we talked about it. It's it's 90s country covers. Yeah. Um, did they play Boot Scoot and Boogie the song? <laughs> I hope so. They played. They played everything. like three sets over the course yeah, of the yeah, week. Yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah, this was the only one I caught. But yeah, it was like something unlocked because I, suddenly I knew all these words. I knew all of these songs. Of course you yeah. do. That the, that <laughs> 90s country boom was it's infectious. So in our face. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was one of my favorites. And then also uh, Jive Talk on the Who stage. Mm. I think that's my new favorite band. Oh, nice. Seriously, they were great. I was told that, go see Jive Talk. Oh, my God. You I should didn't have. do it. Yeah. I didn't do oh. it. That's the one yeah, our friend, they, uh, Repeat, Repeat, what, they produced one of the songs? They they produced their latest album. Oh, the whole album. Out, I think. Okay. Yeah. I, and I, yeah, well, I was hoping to, actually, I went hoping to see Jared and Kristen, but I watched the whole show, and it's just, I don't know, they're just weird. That kind of reminds me of, uh, like, Devo. They came out in these, like, weird costumes and sunglasses, and it was very theatrical and kind of over the top but i loved it nice. yeah like loved a set a do they have a 70s disco ish sound in there during kind some of, yeah. of it yeah mm -hmm. that's what somebody was telling me i don't remember when where i wasn't even at bonnaroo it was before i got there it's like yeah you got to go see jive talk and i'm like okay. they were fun well, the singer he come out to the crowd and he like sat down on the ground he was kind of you know singing with the crowd and uh, you just felt like they were putting a lot into this performance probably because it was their first Bonnaroo so you, you know, spent a lot of time unknown. at the who the who stage too then so you, yeah you, I saw you got three to shows at the who stage yeah nice cool so for, cool. for people it. why I keep talking about repeat repeat uh they that our theme song uh that you hear mm -hmm. every week uh that Jared and Kristen did for us exclusively and um they are and we're going to talk uh, later with say she she and happy landing um and whoever else, but repeat, repeat are a classic Bonnaroo type story for us, for me anyway. Uh, they were the first band to come to Camp Nut Butter to do an interview. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We've followed them ever since, become friends, and uh, I just I love following the career arc type of thing. And um, yeah, so they came yeah. and played Chattanooga one year, and they rode in the bus after the show. We went somewhere. Oh, yeah. And uh, so they've been on the bus. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. So, all right, guys, another long episode. Uh, well, we're not even getting to Sunday yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're going to recap. You want to keep going? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned the chapel thing, which was huge. And I didn't stay much for that just because of the heat. And But the, the one show I did see on Sunday that I loved was Bad, Bad, Not Good. What's that? Where, another... where, where were they playing? They were in that tent. So the tent. No, that tent. this tent. Well, I can't remember. I don't one know. Of, one the of the tents. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they had a kind of a 16 millimeter film camera set up projecting behind them, and it had a lot of weird trippy visuals. It was it was really cool. And yeah, then after that, uh, I think I went back to camp, and that's about the time that they had that rain delay during um, uh, Carly Ray's set, and uh, kind of had to pause for a little bit because there was some lightning in the area. Um, and then they finally restarted and Megan the Stallion, you know, got to go on. And that's about the time that I said, I think I could, I think I could leave and, and be good. <laughs> about three <laughs> hours before that is when I was, uh, when yeah, I was you, had, gone. you had left a little bit before that, but, uh, but yeah, I wasn't too far behind. That was the plan all along. And, uh, yeah, my Sunday went well, uh, but the chapel show was not anything special from what she's been doing. So, like, she didn't do something at Bonnaroo 
that was so much mm-hmm. different than what she's been doing. But that doesn't mean anything other than, you know, I'm trying to get away from best show ever guy. <laughs> but it was it was awesome. It was awesome. And I can't believe how many songs I I knew every song she played. I'm like sing along. I am a pink pony girl, man. I am, <laughs> I am in this Chapel Roan universe. I watch yeah. her now and I'm like, the way I'm starting to understand the Taylor Swift mania, because I'm feeling that a little bit with Chapel Roan. And I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm not saying she's going to be Taylor Swift, but she, her ascension near the apex. Right. There's a lot more to go here. She's just on Fallon the other day. She just ended the her tour. The last show was, was the Bonnaroo show. So... The, they're taking a little bit of time off. I was surprised with how many instruments are on stage. Like it's mm-hmm. a band playing music as opposed to sometimes a pop star like Taylor Swift where you hardly see any band members. You just see this elaborate dance show. Well, you get a little bit of both of that with this. I am hook, line, and sinker on the Chapel Roan stuff. <laughs> I can't believe it. But I, I can't wait to see where nice. she goes nice. from nice. here. And I hope yeah. she's young. She's young. I hope it doesn't eat her up. I hope the, the, the massive stardom explosion doesn't somehow become a problem. Yeah. Because we, we've, that's a story as old as, as civilized time. But it was it was really really good. It was really good. Well, boy, God, you left er, you left too early Sunday because uh, I I got in the pit for Milky Chance and they brought out one of your girls from the, one of the I beaches. I knew they would. I knew yeah. they would. I knew they would because they have a song mm-hmm. together and the beaches clearly were making a weekend of it. Yeah. And uh, I I that was tough to pull away from. And then Isbel that night is one of mm-hmm. my favorites. If you saw that set list, <laughs> snooze fest. Thank God I didn't stick around for that, Jason. I thought you were going to start rocking a little bit now that you're a single man. Boy, he played a lullaby set, yeah. and it's fine. He's great, but I was I, w- I was happy to be at home. I was watching it on Hulu. We'll talk about this down the road. Yeah, yeah. That Hulu stuff, we talked a little bit about somebody had asked us, do we think they'll do- be doing some streaming, doing some more right. comprehensive coverage? That ain't going to work, Bonnaroo. That ain't going to cut it. That was awful. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. I signed up for Hulu for a month so I could watch. I wanted to watch everything while I was at home, and it was like, yeah, I watched it. Some man, of it, it was, it was bad. So we'll cut. We'll circle back around that. That's more of a Hulu thing than it is a Bonnaroo thing. But they right. do need to get together on that and make that. If you're gonna do it, do it better than that. That was bad. All right. Yeah. A couple other highlights but, for me. I saw uh, John yeah, Baptiste ahead. on the What and Brittany Howard on the Witch. They were both very oh, good. Nice. Very nice. So yeah, I caught a little bit of Renee Rap. As kind of a walk by. Yeah, I got some walk bys. Renee raps. Uh, she yeah. had a big crowd. Um, cigarettes after sex. Talk about sleepy though. Yeah, that's yeah. What I heard. They uh, sounded exactly like you expected they were going to, and right. I was like, "This is fine," but I'm I'm good with just moving, making that a walk right. by. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, uh, nice Tesky crowd though. Brothers. Nice crowd. Yeah, Teskey Brothers are really good. Uh. I missed Interpol. That's the one that I'm kind of mad about that I missed. I don't remember why. I think I'd either was either too tired or went to go do something else. But that's the other one I wanted to see, and I didn't make it. All right. What else? I think that about covered. I, I just put down my full shows and just going on memory on walkbys. There's walkbys I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember <laughs> who I saw on Friday. And then we'll go into Guar. What when we do the Guar show? We will oh, spend man. some extra time on on that because that yeah. was that's a yeah, highlight of the weekend. Yeah, didn't talk about that one, but yeah, we'll get into it when we do the Guar show. Yeah, that was great. That was good stuff. All right, anything All right, I else? I think I got everything. I, Barry keeps trying to kick me off, so I guess we're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking at the clock. We're an hour and forty in, so <laughs> yeah. I'm, I I think that covers uh, just about everything. Things will come up and. Um, you know, th- this is not something we can do in one one sleuth. No, you know, but uh, I mean to 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 recap the recap. Uh, I can't wait till next year. I'm I'm literally yeah, already mm-hmm. thinking about uh, camp. I'm already thinking about how to build camp. Uh, a friend of the show, correspondent Trevin Bernarding, has already reached out. Can he be with us next year? So camp yeah, I saw that. Growing. Uh, Come on in, yeah. Come on, yeah. I think he'd be a perfect fit, and uh, me too. I, we're going to talk about Beth. I, Beth is just cool. 
and uh, those guys and their story. Um, Jerry, Mike, and Brad, and and Justice. I think that Brad's Justice. son that was there, right? Um, uh, it was his nephew, and I nephew, think you guys sorry, were gone. Uh, you guys sorry. were gone Sunday. I I had one of the best dad jokes for Father's Day. We were sitting around, and Justice was uh, there. Can't wait Justice to hear is it. probably about twenty ish, wouldn't you say? Uh, I but I we yeah, maybe early twenties, twenty one, twenty two, somewhere. But I I just turned at him and I was like, "Can you see?" And he was like, "What? Yeah, I can see." I was like, "You can see just fine." And he was like, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, I always heard that Justice is blind." <laughs> God. It's terrible. Uh. <laughs> he said he'd never heard that before. I was shocked. I was like, come on, you, you got to hear that all the time with a name like Justice. Well, that so. makes the joke even worse. He didn't guess, even get it. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost as bad as my hippie. Why did the lifeguard let the hippie drown? <laughs> yeah. Too far out. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that one's a little better. It's a little better. Let's get the hell Let's out of here. Let's get out of here, guys. <laughs> Love you. Glad we all survived. Glad we made it. Glad yeah. we're, we're energized and looking forward to next year. We've got a lot of shows coming up, um, coming out of Bonnaroo. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, seriously. And thanks to everybody who came up and said hello. And and uh, Yeah, we, we tried to get names and where you're from and all that, but there's no way we can remember all, all over those the names. country. It was Man, so many people. Just so crazy. Yeah, you know who you are. You do, yep. you, 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 you do and we appreciate you. Yeah, meant the world to me. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>